Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You know, it's kind of funny starting in here. <laughs> Usually we're starting in the craft room. Hi, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. We are starting the first phase of the bedroom makeover. Well, we kind of already have because you went shopping with us, you have done some thrift flips with us and now we are going to be doing the bedroom makeover and actually getting in the room and getting it started. Now, what we're doing today is kind of starting to form the plan as well as taking on a pretty big project, which is addressing the bed situation. I'm gonna build a DIY bed frame of my dreams that you can make pretty easily at home. We're gonna have to figure out our inspiration and come up with a plan of exactly what we're doing and then pick out the supplies. Let's talk about inspiration for this headboard build. Currently I have this very basic bed frame that I'm sitting on. I'll put a picture on the screen. It is like that really simple, inexpensive metal bed frame. The reason we're gonna do this build is because first off, bed frames are expensive. New mattresses are also expensive. And I wanted to be able to invest money into like the other pieces that are gonna be in the room, like the nightstands and the dresser. So this is kind of a cost saving option because my goal is to build out this dream bread frame for about $300. Really what it comes down to, because you definitely can buy bed frames for about $300 in a full or queen size bed, but they were really missing a lot of the features that we're looking for, primarily storage. And if you live in an apartment, you know, that storage is so essential and that under the bed area is honestly one of the best places to store either out of season clothing or larger items. So what I came up with for this design is the wing back headboard. I just found that across the board, that was what I really, really loved. And then instead of doing it upholstered sides around the frame, I thought, why not make a bed skirt? So we're gonna do that, making a coordinated bed skirt, upholstered headboard look and I think this is gonna be pretty easy. So let's head out, let's go buy all of the supplies that we need. That's gonna make it so much harder. <laughs> back from the hardware store and I showed in the vlog one disappointing part was the Lowe's that we typically go to is not cutting more than two cuts on a board and usually I can take with them my cut sheet or my cut list and they will make all the pieces for me so because that's kind of a big setback here we're gonna have to cut these ourselves which means I have to break out a brand new tool I have never used before a circular saw so I'm a little bit nervous to try this, but so excited to have a new tool in my toolbox. Let's give it a try and cut down the rest of these pieces. So I'm gonna be honest, this was the very first time that I've ever tried using the circular saw and I was very nervous. I wasn't ready to break it out for this first project and wanted to get some practice cuts in first, but because of my nerves about going about it, I did call in a little bit of help from my boyfriend. He told me that he had used a circular saw before and so I trusted him to show me how to use it and turns out he also never had used one before, but he was just trying to give me the confidence I needed to keep me going. And after I got this first cut done, I was ready to go and tackle the rest of the cuts for this project.
one of the things I plan to do for this bedroom makeover is create a spot that makes a perfect focal point for art and other little display pieces. And while I do make a lot of wall art DIYs on the channel, it's been a while since I've gone back to my roots of doing more of the fine art side of things. And I'm starting to get back into it through Skillshare. Skillshare is the sponsor of today's video and I've been taking one of their learning paths kind of as a refresher on some of my basic acrylic painting skills. So I'm gonna get out my supplies and start painting and while I do that I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Skillshare. If you want to expand your hobbies, level up your professional skills, or even launch a side hustle, Skillshare has thousands of classes to help you get started. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of members and online classes led by industry pros. And what I really love about Skillshare and especially these learning paths is that you're not just getting one video on a single topic. You are guided through lessons that build upon each other to help you build your skills throughout each course in the path. I was able to learn some of the basics of brush strokes to form and dimension all the way down to this abstract painting that you're seeing here. And there's even more on this path that I'm so excited to take and complete and learn way more about expanding my art skills. And if you don't want to try painting, there are dozens of other learning paths that will allow you go from beginner to advanced in no time, including illustration, graphic design, marketing, productivity, and even detail. DIY and crafts. So if you're looking to invest in yourself and your goals by learning something new, then Skillshare can help you take your career, hobbies, or side hustle to the next level. And the first 500 people to use the link in my description box will get one free month of Skillshare. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we have all of our pieces cut down. Now what we're gonna do is start assembling the wings. So I brought some wood glue. It is kind of optional, but I'm gonna do it for some extra strength and stability. And we're just gonna sandwich these two pieces that we cut together to make both of our wings, just to really kind of beef them up a little bit. After creating those sandwiched plywood pieces, we're now going to need to make an L-shaped piece that's going to attach it to the back of the headboard. And I did call in a little bit of help to make this part a little easier. So we got the base, the frame built, so now we're going to need a big bag of batting. And I went with the king size bed sized amount of quilt batting, which is what we're gonna use. You're gonna wanna make sure you also get the extra loft or like the kind of thicker, puffier type of batting for this project. I'm choosing to not use foam because foam can get really expensive. And I done a previous headboard build and just used batting and it looked fine and it was just as fluffy as it needed to be. So we're gonna start by upholstering the sides before we move on to the main part of the headboard. Welcome to day two of the headboard build and 
we finally have sunshine. It has seriously been two weeks of just cloudy, gloomy, overcast days, and it feels so good to have sun. And because of that, I figured before we get back into the upholstering of that headboard, I need your guys' help to pick out some paint colors. So what we're gonna do is paint little test swatches and tape them up on the wall and see which colors we like the best. So I painted my little samples onto just some heavy duty art paper here and we're gonna just tack them up above the bed because this is the area where that accent wall is going to be. We're starting with the color, it's called Groundbreaking and that's gonna go first. This next one here is Adaptive Shade. Now we have Virtual Taupe. And then our fourth and darkest of all the colors is Urbane Bronze. So here are our four color options. I'll insert some clips of how they look in different light with full sunlight and also when we get a little bit more into the evening time as well. When I'm looking at these though, I really don't see like a clear one I'd immediately remove from the wall right now because they all have different attributes about them. So I think I am really gonna need your guys' help as we sit on it. I do kind of like the darkerness, darkerness, is that a word? <laughs> I do like the darkness of this shade. It's a little bit too dark maybe right here with the Urbane Bronze, but I don't know. We're trying to do like a cool, like moody look. But let me know what you guys think in the comments, which of these colors should we go with? Because I'm gonna use those comments to help me make a final decision before we put up this accent wall. Okay, let's talk about fabric. I wanna show you what I picked out. And I never once in my life thought I would bring home an entire roll of fabric, but here we are. I bought everything that was left of this. This is like seven and three quarter yard or a seven and a half, it's somewhere in there. I was estimating I needed about eight. So we're gonna have our fingers crossed that this is enough fabric to get this entire project done. But I really liked this one because it is like a nice light color with some beiges, whites, and even a little bit of some charcoal gray. So it kind of creates this overall like taupe look with the fabric. Yeah, I'm hoping this goes pretty much as easy as it was to apply the batting. It's gonna be almost an identical process. So I don't think this is gonna be that difficult. is a little bit unique for your upholstering technique because usually I would say that you want to put staples down on all four sides pulling it tight between each staple but for this one you're going to want to leave the top unstapled for now so I focused on the bottom and then the sides this one again I called in extra help for it just to make it go a little bit faster so I didn't have to keep running from end to end to make sure that those staples were in and pulling the fabric nice and tight We got the back portion down. We're not gonna staple the top down yet. We're gonna move on to the wings now. It's gonna be a little bit more involved than the back, but I think this should go pretty quickly. We've been using the stapler too much because we went to go load in more staples and we broke it. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I have a backup. <laughs> Hey 
And finally, with everything upholstered, it was time to assemble the entire headboard. Because the wing pieces added a little bit of bulk, I added a small little piece of scrap wood as a shim and used the nail gun to hold that into place. And then also used some wood screws for some extra stability holding these wings onto the back of the headboard. Now what you see me doing here is adding just a little bit more batting along that edge because I thought this would kind of even out this step, but honestly, it really didn't do too much. And that's because in this step, we're taking that unstapled top edge and folding it over the entire piece, including the two wing attachments, create a nice seamless look. And it was so exciting at this point to finally see this project really starting to come together and get that complete look of this headboard. We're on to day three of the headboard bed frame build and it's another gloomy day here, which it was so nice to have the sun yesterday and I honestly didn't want this project to extend into three days, but we decided to enjoy the nice day as well. So today we're on to the bed skirt we're kind of making this faux upholstered bed frame look. I have the rest of my bolts here and I'm kind of starting to think I bought way too much fabric for this project. Just for reference so that you can see, I have put the different measurements of the different pieces you would need to cut out for your various bed sizes. The length of the piece would be dependent on how tall your bed frame is. But other than that, the lengths are, be, are gonna be what you would need to follow. We got the pieces cut and also got some of them pinned. So that means it is time to sew. So I will be right back. Here's the sewing machine. And it has been a very long time, I think, since I have last used this. So I think it's gonna require a little bit of maintenance before we can even begin sewing. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's looking real dusty in here. Bleh, look at that. <laughs> It honestly felt really nice to break out the sewing machine because it really has been a long time. And kind of like what I mentioned with painting earlier in the video, sewing is another one of those hobbies that got me into DIY, particularly DIYing my own home decor. I kind of started by sewing quilts and throw pillows and things like that. But if you don't have a sewing machine, this project is definitely achievable without one. All you would need to do is pick up some hem tape and you can iron that along the hem instead of sewing it and it works just as well for a project like this. To install the bed skirt, I'm gonna be using some bed skirt pins. I picked up a pack off of Amazon and these will stick right into the box spring, but if you don't have a box spring and are just going straight with a bed frame, you can also use a pack of Velcro. And I started by adding these smaller corner pieces first before adding the front and two longer sides.
I'm so happy with how this bed frame came out from everything to the wing back style headboard down to the bed skirt, both looking like that upholstered look that is super trendy right now, but also providing some functionality by giving us under bed storage. And the best part is I went in with a goal of spending no more than $300 and the grand total for this project came in at $213.83. So I think that is a big success in my book. Now don't forget to head to the description description box and check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to click that link will get their first month for free. And you're going to want to be subscribed because there are so many more bedroom makeover videos coming up and I'm going to need your input and help as we get closer and closer to the big final reveal. That's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.